Aiken. This is Bet Stars and Stripes with Dr. Turf, Ed Wyatt, and Alice Gander. And welcome to Bet Stars and Stripes on this Sunday night, six minutes past the hour of eight o'clock. It's fantastic to have the team back together, and we're going to dissect everything that happened last Monday for us for Super Bowl Sunday in New Orleans. We'll also talk a little bit of NBA. We'll relate the latest uh, drug and, uh, I guess, the criminal investigations into the involvement of sports scientists and the like in the uh, AFL and NRL with what, uh, I guess, we can compare that with the United States and perhaps some, some similar challenges that they might have faced in the past or perhaps how it differs in regards to, to cultures of the sport, for want of a better phrase. And we'll also uh, give away another game pass, an NBA game pass for our listeners, but great to have the team back together. Ed Wyatt, uh, yeah. nice to have you here again. How are you? Good to be back. Uh, Dr. Turf back from New Orleans. Yes, Dash, lovely to be here. Likewise, Alice Gander from Betstar. It's L. also fantastic to be back. It's <laughs> good to get the team back together. And I just want to really, really quickly just send a shout out to my cousin, to my nephew, Ben, who I know is listening, and I uh, just want to send a shout out to him. He's a superstar nephew, and uh, he's doing really well and uh, starting a new school, so I just want to say good day well, to Ben. Ben. Good Stuff. If you're listening, mate, you would be very proud of Uncle L. <laughs> because he was B.A.G. Was in, he? In New Orleans. He was... Riding the streetcar named his own. magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> well, where do you start with this Super Bowl? I mean, first you have to start, I think, with New Orleans and, probably and the atmosphere, there. don't yeah. you? Just the week and the food and the drink and the yeah. fans and the party. Man, fill us in. Well, it was yeah, extraordinary because it was... Um, oh, yeah, I've talked about it with, uh, with KB and stuff, but the build-up. I mean, it's not just the game of footy, is mm-hmm. it? I mean, it's just the build-up to the Super Bowl which I think sort of kicked in around about Wednesday, and the town just seemed to fill up all through uh, all through the week, culminating on Sunday. Everywhere you walk, there seemed to be music. I mean, they have got the world's best bus, because I've never seen buskers oh, yeah. like that in my life. Without it, matter, Every street corner, there was these... Buskers that would win. <laughs> I mean, they were just yeah, Australian idol. <laughs> yeah. So we haven't had a chance to talk about it, Doc. This is the first time we've seen each other since we got back. But well, since we've been sensible. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> but, there wasn't much sensible sense talked over there. One of the things yeah. I was really amazed about New Orleans is how it actually built up. And you touched on it then. Like Wednesday night, we flew in and we went out Wednesday night. We had dinner and had a few drinks afterwards. Went, went on a crawl. <laughs> we went on a crawl. Easy to do in New Orleans. But it was it was actually relatively quiet Wednesday night. Yeah, and it then was. Yeah. The, almost the population doubled Thursday and then doubled again Friday and then Saturday was just complete mayhem. Walking down Bourbon Street on Saturday, I mean, you just couldn't move. There were people... And the other amazing thing about New Orleans, which I've never been to a city like it, is that you can actually drink outside. So yes. You, can, you, you get yes. a drink in one pub yeah, and indeed. then you take your drink with you to the next pub next door down <laughs> yeah. the road two blocks away. Yeah, it makes no difference. But there was no sign of angst. There was no... I didn't see any fights. Uh, I didn't see any violence. Uh, mind you, there were 8,000 cops in there. Yeah. I mean, there was coppers everywhere. Um, yeah, like, it was just extraordinary. And the other thing was that I was uh, totally unaware of so many people came into New Orleans, New Orleans, uh, who weren't going to the... To the Super Bowl. Oh, just for the... They just come to Super Bowl right. City. For I love fight. that. I actually really enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. Were you guys uh, sort of this sort of special because you're from Australia? I mean, did that did Well, that, that goes. We're yeah. used to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, there is a bit of that. I yeah. mean, they're always interested to know. Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. Even the, you know, at all the media calls, the players themselves are really keen to talk to you and right. talk about <laughs> AFL and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a great conversation with Tori Smith, and it just the really? biggest AFL fan just wanted to talk right. about it. And really, you guys, wow. it was all you guys. Uh, you know, with the fact that there's no cool. no prote- no padding and no protection, and that's fantastic. It's, you know, it's hard being on the road on the weekends, but we watch as much AFL as we can. <laughs> that is hilarious. The other the other thing that I found, which was uh, which was really great to be involved with is the fact that the NFL have got such amazing funding. Like, they're clearly a wealthy, org- like, a ridiculously wealthy organisation. So every touch point in that whole, whether it be the media centre and the press conferences, whether it be the tailgate prior to the Super Bowl, whether it be the Super Bowl itself, whether it be any aspect of it, getting the players around. I mean, they had they had three or four buses, not only for the players, but for players' families, and then they had police escorts with them. You could just tell that money was no issue. It's like, mm. we need this to be spectacular. Mm. We need it to be seamless and we need everyone to love it and just throw money at the problem. We have talked about it before but the, the way they look after the media there and, and I've made the, the point there in, in a way 
I think being also part of the AFL media, you're almost treated like the enemy in, by clubs and I'm not mm. saying by the AFL, but there's a little yeah, bit. They, they, do only, yeah, they do only yeah. what they have to do. Yeah, I'm not saying yeah. it's a, I don't yeah. want to generalise, but there's a little bit of that. Whereas without any shadow of a doubt, the NFL and the clubs treat the media as their corporate partners. Right. It's, the, it's just 180 degrees different. Those media calls, which everybody's invited to, all the all the media go to. I went to the Baltimore one, didn't go to the San Francisco one. But it's it's virtually Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. For an hour and a half, every player, and I mean every player, from Flacco to Kaepernick down to guys you'd never heard of before, are on tables and they sit there and one by one they get interviewed, they get filmed, they get photographed by radio, press, TV. And at, at the end of the day, at the 11.30 when it all wraps up, they're still chin-wagging, they're as happy as Larry to, to talk to you and, and really upbeat. And it was just a little bit of a, you know, a contrast to, mm. uh, you know, what we deal with a little bit here. And, of course, they, they feed the media everything there, too. I mean, everything's laid out for all. There's transcripts from all the interviews, yeah. from every, including the questions. Those packs are incredible, aren't they? You go to an NBA game, there. they've got so much paper. The recycling yep. is just so I, will, I mean, there's press conferences for the Harbour uh, brothers, the parents. Yes. Roger Goodall gives one. So there's all sorts of press <laughs> conferences with notable people. I reckon the only thing, the, the one event, if you like, that they probably overcooked was there was a big media call for the arrival of the Roman numerals. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. They make, a big, they make a big deal of these, these uh, oversized... Which make no sense yeah. anymore. You know, anyway... <laughs> X oh, L X L V I I I. I. Yeah, they cool. arrive in New Orleans, and there's a, there's a media <laughs> call for the arrival of the Roman numerals. I reckon that's stretching it. That's pushing it. Agreed. <laughs> Try to get a quote out of the bloke delivering him or something. Yeah. Just getting yeah. hiccups on the road. Or... Yeah. Now at uh, at Betstar, of course, thirteen doesn't have to be an unlucky number. In fact, thirteen is the new seven. Keep an eye and ear out next week to find out how Betstar are going to prove that on the thirteenth of every month, starting this month, which uh, is in fact this week. Yeah, it is. So we've uh, 2013. It's uh, hopefully going to be a big year for uh, a big year for sport and a big year for. Um... Well, it started off big, Al. <laughs> started with a bang. I got back. I got, I got Tell back me about on it. Wednesday. Yeah, welcome what, back, what guys. What have I walked into here? Welcome back. And they say 13's an unlucky number, so we thought we'd put a spin on it at yep. Betstar. So every the 13th of every month for the remainder of 2013, there is going to be a a promo. At Betstar. So hit betstar.com.au and whether it's going to be even money favourites, whether it's going to be double fixed odds, every month will be something a little bit different. So make sure that on the 13th of every month it's not unlucky anymore and uh, and you will have some luck at betstar.com.au. Now just looking at uh, obviously the atmosphere of the actual game, it was 71,000 people. We, we had obviously the bizarre uh, yeah. implications yeah. of a 37 minute lights Crazy. out of the stadium. What was, was a crowd sort of behaviour and an interaction like during that period? I mean, I don't know Baltimore where, in control at that stage. I don't know where Al was sitting. I was on the darkened side of the ground. Yeah, so was I. Um, and I, I just got the feeling that if the other side had have been as dark as our side, I think the crowd would have been pretty restless. Yeah. Right. I, but I, it, there was enough light there for it to be okay. I actually thought, to be honest, I thought it was a bit of a beat-up. Like yeah, it wasn't that bad. It, it actually it wasn't was, bad at all. You it could, was just strange. Right. You know, the only but, place, so, so there was a line down the centre of the field basically and one half the lights were out and one half the lights were full like there wasn't an issue at all so there was enough in the stadium and in the seating for it to be absolutely fine I thought the media beat it up a little bit right, the only yeah. place would have been of some concern is if you're on the dark side and you're in the toilets or you're somewhere well, like that that yes. would have been Having pitch black that, we went up the back where all the concessions you know where all the food and grog were sold and where the toilets were and it was dark it yeah. was very mm. very dark in there and I, know, I noticed all the corporate boxes were out on one side of the right. ground too so that would have been, a, I guess, and a CBS. Pain in the neck. CBS was off. Jim Nance. In fact, that's when I first noticed it. Nance started to say blah blah blah, and yeah. then his voice yeah. went away. I assumed it was just a local problem. And then, and then and they NFL, were off the air. NFL TV, who broadcast on the on the ground itself, up near the end zone at one end, they had their own. I mean, they have big setup, lighting grids, the whole thing. And I noticed right. they were up and running. Of like course, a, yeah. a few <laughs> seconds, and uh, they were actually very close to the action where their right. studio, their mobile studio, was set up. But yeah, like, look, it was okay. I mean, I reckon if it had have gone down during the Beyonce concert, it really would have caused a big outcry. Yeah, because it was dark. Right. CBS. I mean, my take on CBS, and I don't know what they did because I wasn't watching the coverage. But if I was the CEO of CBS, this would be just a great windfall, wouldn't it? All of a sudden, we can't show the game for thirty-four minutes, mm. and we 
can run ads for sure. that we're charging three million bucks no, <laughs> for no, a one minute a spot. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, how good is this? I'll just be getting onto every client. All right, we're going to run it instead of three million. We'll charge you a million, but we're going to run it and let's add run ads for thirty four minutes. And there's no Honestly. doubt it saved the game. I mean, the power outage did save the game. Well, yeah, we were yeah, headed uh, to blowout city, and for whatever reason. The Niners got back into it yeah. after that. Well, yeah, I was listening to the right because they give you headsets uh, in the media. They're, right. they're, you can actually buy them as well, but and you can listen to the game. You can take the NFL feed. You can take CBS's feed or the Spanish feed. Uh, I was going to say. I tried yeah. the Spanish feed for about five minutes, mm. but I got nothing from it. Right. Um, Who would have thought? But they were talking <laughs> half time, saying it's going to be easier to say this could help you know, the Ravens' momentum and mm. turn the game around. But um, I suppose that was an easy thing to say. I mean, it happened to both teams. Um, in actual fact, San Francisco was more disadvantaged than Baltimore were because they were on the dark side of the ground. True. Baltimore, they, yeah, Baltimore, they, Baltimore, power, they, they yeah. were all throwing the ball around yeah. and they were had all their laptops and yeah. all that working, yeah. where San Francisco were dead. And they couldn't really throw the ball around because it was pretty dark. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Now, um, Joe Flacco, obviously, the, uh, the the MVP from the game, spoke a little bit about how his side responded after the lights came back on. Listen, I think we're a very calm group, and we've been put in those situations before. We still had the lead. Uh, we just knew we had to go down and put some drives together because they were, they were going at that point, and they were playing really well. Uh, I think we were able to do that. I wish we would have been able to put the ball in the end zone, but we were able to have some pretty good drives there. Um, not only eat up clock, but put points on the board, and they ended up to uh, you know be, be some big points. Thank it, you, ESPN. It's, it's, Mr. Dull, they call him. it's very easy to say that mm. when you've won. Yeah. But I mean, my my take on the game was that Joe Flacco and the Ravens had an extraordinary first half. They were fantastic. He you know, dominated. He had some clutch plays. They did. But first of all, San Francisco had the first drive. They controlled the first drive. Two hideous penalties. Awful. Awful. I mean, there was yeah. a. Fantastic first down completion. Yeah, first was, play of the game. That was yeah. pulled back because I think it was an offside, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, illegal formation. Illegal formation, which right. is unforgivable. It the is. first play of the day. It is. That ended up being, they turned the ball over, Baltimore went up and scored. Their second score came from a horrible fumble by Baltimore. Yeah, uh, yep, yep. And the third touchdown was the, the kick return. So, I just, know, the, the, the sort, I just thought, their first three San seven. Francisco made it very easy for Baltimore. Yeah, they I did. Agree. They handed them fourteen. And but they have the history of coming back. San Francisco. They came come back. Came back against Atlanta. They've come back uh, strong. Yeah. So look, I, it's an interesting one to debate. I do think, but in terms of the ratings and the drama and all that, there's no doubt that that power Here's one to added debate. To it. The fi- virtually the final play. The hold was, was the hold was the hold there. Oh, the, well, the, it, it, I, the way I looked at it. Yes. Sorry, Ed was. It's like an AFL grand final. It's going to get paid home and away season every day of the week. But if you think a referee is going to overturn that and therefore overturn the result of the game, no, it well, ain't going to happen. But keep in mind, the you know what happens with the penalty in the end zone anyway? To safety. It's yeah. So it's the same result. So even if they flag that, it's still two points. So it's the same exact result. Well, right? Because got... Baltimore is trying to take a safety. So it's a holding in the end zone on the punt. Percent. No, or you no, 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 he's talking about the punt. final drive. I thought he was talking about the punt. Was held, sorry, was sorry, sorry. On the final punt, so there was also a hold. Becomes a first down. Yeah, it would have been, yes, correct. It would have yeah. been on the one. Uh, yeah, I agree with you 100%. I think that was just close enough to where you don't throw the flag. Yeah. And San Francisco, three bad calls. Yeah, three, three bad passes calls. Three passes. when Where was Frank Gore? You know, where was some of that Kaepernick running? Well, was I was going to say, wouldn't you have said Kaepernick... The, at, Jim Harbaugh have reverted. Run, have a run. He reverted to conservative NFL coach. Let's just throw it out to our athlete and hope he makes a play. It was really poor play, poor execution. Now Ray Lewis obviously goes out on top as well. We know he's never short of a word, but here's uh, a quote from him on ESPN. Baltimore. How do you describe it, Ray? How do you describe it going out as a champion? It's simple. When God is for you, who can be against you? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> does, that, does that mean that God was against everybody else? It's, it's oh, funny. Uh, I, I, it's very <laughs> cold. 